QuickJS is taking a new approach to performance optimization by employing a brand new strategy called Resumability. What? I know, despite its friendly developer experience, Quick introduces a couple of novel concepts you might have issues understanding at first. Don't worry, the Quick team is more than happy to help on the matter, and in this video we'll look in detail at Resumability, the hydration alternative which leads to mind-blowing initial loading results. If you are not familiar with the idea of rendering in web apps, here are the core concepts you should know. CSR is short for client-side rendering. This is when the browser receives from the server an empty app shell and all the necessary JavaScript code required to fully build the app, also known as a single-page app, directly on the client. This approach might lead to end users seeing a blank screen for quite a few seconds while the browser executes the JS scripts and builds the UI. Second, SSR or server-side rendering is the solution devs came up with to remove that blank screen that the end user is faced with in CSR. So the web app is first rendered on the server, the resulting HTML is sent to the browser and the user sees a static version of the app. Last but not least, hydration is the term used to describe the final step in this process. This is how the static version of the app becomes dynamic, by rebuilding the app again on the client. The issue with most front-end frameworks is that they were built with client-side rendering in mind. Server-side rendering was most of the time an afterthought, and this is why the hydration process will sometimes feel like a workaround, suffering quite a few drawbacks. So hydration is an expensive non-optimal process, but until we came along, it was the best solution we had. To understand why and how we got here, let's take a step back and briefly review the ways we built and rendered web apps in the past. Prior to 2010, when the concept of front-end frameworks really took off, web apps were fully rendered on the server. Depending on the programming language you are using, you would have probably worked in a framework such as Ruby on Rails or Symfony, building multi-page applications. The MVC architecture was quite popular at that time, and most of these tools had a view templating system used to aggregate the data and compute the HTML on the backend. Once computed, the HTML was sent over the wire to the client, and most interactivity was done via plain old links and forms. The little JavaScript you might have used would run on the static page already interactive through standard HTML elements. However, relying on links and forms had some user experience drawbacks. Not great or terrible. Requests are sent synchronously to the server, and the user has to wait for the response, which reloads the entire page in the browser. To improve this behavior, it became common to build parts of the UI directly in JavaScript using information received asynchronously via AJAX calls. This improved user experience but affected developer experience. Now, devs had to implement parts of the application twice. Once on the backend using Java, for instance, and once again on the frontend using JavaScript. Facing this issue, the solution seemed obvious at that time. Let's build the entire UI directly on the frontend. This is how we got to the single page applications I mentioned a minute ago. Of course, as we all know, SPAs also have drawbacks, and there are major advantages in having the server involved in rendering. This is how we ended up with the hydration process. Once we tested CSR for a while, it turned out SSR is more appropriate for the modern web, and we patched things up by building the app first on the server and then again on the client. Something seems wrong, right? Well, this is exactly what the Quick team thought when they decided to come up with a better alternative to all this redundancy. And there is immobility. So, with hydration, the app is rendered on the server, sent to the browser a static HTML, and then the same rendering process is replayed again on the client. With resumability, the app is rendered on the server, some useful information is added to the resulting HTML markup, and then, when this HTML reaches the client, the browser displays the UI and, via the useful information, understands the current state of your app and resumes work from where the server left off. Note that the replaying step was completely removed from the process. To achieve this, the server rendered HTML contains three key pieces of useful information event listeners, the component tree, and the app state. Next, let's see what happens on the client once this enhanced HTML is processed. Of course, quick apps are HTML first, but the JavaScript still needs to be downloaded to ensure interactivity. There are three concepts you should understand here. How is the code prepared for the client? How is it downloaded on the client? And how is it executed? First of all, using a tool called the optimizer, quick performs aggressive code splitting at build time, so you'll end up with a lot of small distribution files called chunks. How aggressive is this code splitting? Well, for every dollar sign definition you're using to create a new component or register an event handler, 
there is a potential for Quick to perform lazy loading if the need arises. Why does this matter? Imagine you have a buy button on a product component. This product is static and never needs to re-render on the client. So why download the product component just so we can hydrate the buy button? Okay, so we have a bunch of chunk files. How are these reaching the client? Quick comes with another cool concept. Compared to traditional frameworks which download your JS app, Quick streams it to the browser. Once the initial HTML reaches the client, the framework starts buffering the chunks on a service worker thread and saves them in the browser cache, making them ready for interaction. This approach allows you to interact with your app instantly, solving the uncanny valley problem. As a parallel, think of you watching this YouTube video right now. When you click play, you didn't have to wait for the entire file to download. The browser downloads the first couple of seconds, it plays the video instantly, and then buffers the rest of the content behind the scenes for you. This is the same concept Quick is implementing. The final piece of the puzzle is the Quick Loader, a 1KB minified JavaScript file which is in charge of listening for browser events and coordinating the bits of JavaScript that need to be downloaded and executed. The Quick Loader is sent to the browser inlined in the HTML response. When executed, the Quick Loader sets up global listeners for all browser events. Then, when an event is intercepted, the Quick Loader is able to match the event to the chunk containing the appropriate event handler. The handler is then retrieved and invoked accordingly. Feel free to reach out in the comments if you still have questions regarding resumability, and until next time, thank you for watching.